Various doctrine books teach that Christ possessed all the glory, the nature, and the attributes of God during his earthly life, just as much as when he was in the form of God. They give us proof, certain statements in the Bible, which if you examine them for yourself, refers to him before he became God, or refers to him after he was exalted again at the right hand of the Father and had the glory restored back to him, but not a one of the scriptures that they use ever proves or ever says anything about him as retaining all his divine attributes and powers while in the flesh on earth. And, of course, they do give some references about Jesus Christ healing the sick and, and uh, reading the minds of people and knowing their thoughts and so on, and they think that he is therefore omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent and he has all the divine attributes and powers that he had with the Father before the world was. But couldn't those scriptures be understood in this light? That he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and to that Spirit did all those wonderful things? Upon examination of these passages, it can be seen that not one passage teaches that Christ ever had his divine attributes and power and the eternal glory that he had with the Father before the world was that he had that glory during the days of his flesh. The true biblical teaching of the kenosis of Christ, that is, the self-emptying of Christ, is that in taking human form he divested himself of his divine attributes, or at least power to use them, having laid aside his God form and voluntarily given up his glory, which he had with the Father before the world was, and became limited in knowledge, wisdom, power, glory, and in every way that man was and that he retained his de deity or his divine nature. The Bible further teaches that he was made of a woman without a human father and was therefore free from the fallen human nature and that came through Adam and his male descendants. It could not be that Christ laid aside his divine nature, for then he would cease being God. Paul did not say he ceased being God, but that he laid aside his God form and emptied himself of everything that would hinder him from being a true and real human being, and in all things like unto his brethren, as plainly declared by Paul in Hebrews 2, 9 to 18. Now then, some definite scriptures on this line. This harmonizes perfectly with every scripture given by the various writers. If Christ retained all divine attributes, or the free use of them in becoming man, then of what did he empty himself? And how could we harmonize all the many limitations of his earthly life with the fact that he was equal with God in every sense? If God, with all divine attributes, uh, is as limited as Christ was in his earthly life, then God is not so much greater than man after all. On the other hand, if God is as infinite and great as he is revealed in the Bible to be, and Christ demonstrated just the opposite in his earthly life, then it must be concluded that Christ divested himself of these divine powers in taking human form. The manifestation of attributes is given by many, proving that uh, he did have the attributes because he exercised certain powers. We can understand that certainly in connection with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Paul definitely teaches in Philippians 2, 5 to 11 that Christ did empty himself, that he laid aside his God form and his equality with God and took human form and was made in the likeness of men. Paul further states in Hebrews 2 and 5 that it was necessary for Christ to be made in all things like unto his brethren, that he might be a faithful and merciful high priest in things pertaining to God. For though he were a son, yet we read, that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. How could we understand of a God, the Supreme One, learning obedience by the things which he suffered? We cannot understand such statements in connection with God retaining all his glory. But you can understand such statements in connection with God limiting himself as man and coming down on man's plane to live as a man. Peter's doctrine of the sufferings of Christ, so as to leave us an example that we should walk in his steps would mean nothing to ordinary human rebels if he endured the sufferings as a god and not as a man. What injustice it would be to expect ordinary, frail, and weak man to suffer as only a god could suffer. On the other hand, if he suffered as any other human being would suffer, 
having God as a helper only and not as being a God, then every suffering human being can be inspired by such an example and, and endure all as he did. The prophets foretold as being limited as a man. Isaiah 7, 14 to 16 speaks of the virgin-born son as growing in knowledge as any other child, and that there would be a time in his life when he would not know to choose the good and refuse the evil because of being so young and immature. What a strange thing to say of Jesus if he were full, a full-grown God having all the uses of the divine attributes and powers. Also in Isaiah 54 to 11 we read, The Lord hath given me, that is the Messiah, the tongue of the learned, that I may know how to speak a word in due season to him that is weary. He, that is God, wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheek to them that plucked out my hair. Thus you can see this does refer to Jesus Christ. I hid my face from shame and spitting. Again, we have strange words if he was omniscient in the days of his flesh. In Psalm 119, 97 to 104, we have another clear prophecy of the Messiah, meditating in the word of God and becoming wiser than his enemies, his teachers, and all the ancients. One could not possibly harmonize such statements in connection with a full-grown, mature, and highly educated man, much less a great God with all the use of his divine attributes and powers. We cannot conceive of a God who still had omniscience and had to be taught and be instructed as was Jesus, who still was immutable and eternal and yet too young to know good from evil or capable of death, who still was omnipotent and could not help himself, who still was omnipresent and was yet limited in a small, helpless baby body and was limited like any other human being. History proves that Christ was limited during his earthly life. Mark definitely states that Christ was limited in knowledge while in his earthly life. For Jesus, when he was a full-grown man, said that he did not know yet or at that time the hour of his return. Mark 13, 32. Now, how would that be understood in connection with a God who knows all things? Luke also records how Jesus grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man, Luke 2, 40 and 52. Paul speaks of him as having learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Such could never be said of Christ if he had retained all his divine attributes of omniscience, immutability, and all the other divine attributes. Christ himself claimed no power, exercised no personal attribute or, per, or of deity apart from the full anointing of the Holy Spirit. He himself said in Matthew 12, 28, that he did what he did by the Holy Ghost. And in 3, 21, 22 of Luke, and 4, 1, and John 3, 34, and Acts 10, 38, we read how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who by that power of the Holy Spirit went about doing his wonderful works, and not because he was God. If his works were through the anointing of the Spirit, then they could not be through the exercise of his own natural attributes of deity. Prophecy foretells that Christ was to be anointed with the Spirit and do his works by this anointing and not by being God and having the exercise of all the divine powers that he had before in all eternity. History plainly records the fulfillment of these predictions in the Gospels that which time Jesus Christ repeatedly said, The Son can do nothing of himself. I can of mine own self do nothing. We have, a, we have many statements like that, especially in the book of John. The fact that Christ promised all disciples that they could do the same works and even greater works than he did proves that uh, he did those things by the Holy Spirit because he could not expect the disciples to be God like he was so if he did those things through being God, then that's out of the question for ordinary man. The fact that the disciples did exercise such power proves the same contention. Disciples had power to impart the baptism in the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts to people and to do the works of Christ. The time was not yet come when men could be baptized with the Holy Spirit until Christ was glorified, but after that it had come. 
We read also in John 17, 5, further proof that Christ limited himself during his earthly life. For he prayed that the Father might restore to him all the glory that he had before the world was. It was not until after the resurrection that he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Christ and others repeat, repeatedly stated that God gave him certain powers and blessings that enabled him to do the works, that he did his works in the Father's name, that he was not as great as his Father, that he was, not, uh, that he was sent of God and did not come of himself, that his works are not of himself but were of the Father, that he could do nothing of himself, that he did nothing of himself, that his doctrine was not his own, that he did not speak of himself, that he sought God's glory and not his own, that he was a servant of God and perfectly obedient to God, and that his works were proof that God was with him, that he was sending his followers to confirm the gospel to do divine works just as the Father had sent him to do divine works, that he used the same means of grace and prayer and faith and yieldingness to the Holy Spirit that believers must use if they are to do the works of Jesus Christ. Could such things be said of a God who had not emptied himself of his glory and of his divine attributes and powers? Certainly not. Christ's exaltation of the highest place with God is also proof of his lowest humiliation and limitation before God, even to do nothing, say nothing, be nothing, and depend upon God for needed grace for body, soul, and spirit, and for success to do the works which he did in this world. Thus we must recognize that Christ really did empty himself of himself in becoming man. Now here's a good promise for you today. Psalm 125.1 They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. Faith is the act of man as if God was true. Friends, just one more message now on the subject of Jesus Christ. We hope you have received the former messages on how that Christ did empty himself and became a man to take the place as a man, to set an example for man, to prove to man, every one of us, that we can become like God through Jesus Christ. Just like God, Christ through God became a man, we through God can become like Christ. 